everything. And listen, at the end of his life, at the end of, uh, you know, someone like that, at the end of their life, they're going to find that money couldn't get them to heaven. Money couldn't, you know, fix everything and, and all that. And so, um, but here's Job. He, he has this controlling fear. Fear is a powerful force. Living in fear is a miserable life. God wants to remove fears and replace them with love and peace. One of the, the opposite of fear, one of the things that's the opposite of fear is love. A child who knows they're loved is a sl- child that sleeps very well. When a child lives in a house where there's drinking and fighting and chaos and confusion and, and violence or battles going on, he's, he's, he's going to have fear, he's going to worry. Many times he don't cry himself to sleep at night. He only sleeps when it's late and things die down. And he, but listen, a child who knows he's loved, one that can go to sleep. And a Christian who knows he's loved by God, knows and feels it and, and understands it and has that relationship, can go to sleep saying, The world is crazy and it's, it's a mad world out there and it's, and it's mean and hateful and violent and scary. But I'm gonna go. <laughs> David, David said it. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. He said, I'm gonna go to sleep. You enemies, attack if you want to, but I'm gonna give some sleep. See, only God can do that. God wants to take away the fear and he wants to give you rest. Right? And he can. Job was wealthy. He had family, friends, finances, but he lived constantly afraid to lose it all. There's some fears though, that are so great, so big, that only God can lay them to rest. There's some fears only God can, can put a stop to them. And sometimes the only way to get rid of them is through major adversity. Is through facing the things you fear the most. What do you fear? Have you ever faced? I mean, faced it, Dad. I mean, I mean, tell me. I told you when I was a kid, I, I, I didn't like people. I was afraid of people. I didn't like confrontations and all of that. But I, when it come to bugs and animals and critters, I wasn't scared of nothing. I mean, I had snakes for pets. You understand? I did. I thought they were fascinating. I thought they were, I didn't get the big one. And I'd catch me a little snake and I'd put it in the can, you know, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And uh, I wasn't afraid of anything. But I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like wasps because I'd been stung by a few of those things. And they can fly, and they can fly faster than I can run. God made me face down the wasp. I've told you the story before. I put 178 of them things with a fly swap one day in my little house. Because I went in there supposed to go to bed. It was late at night. And that little room was full of wasps and yellow jackets. God said, you're going to go sleep somewhere else in the cold? Or are you going to sleep in the place I got you? After you get home. Listen, I still don't like wasps, but if I got to go kill one, I'll kill it. Okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, but listen, whatever your fear is, and that's a little simple thing in this world. It ain't that, I ought, that we ought not be afraid of. There's some natural fear. You don't like Right? But if, if a snake changes you and makes you into something crazy and nothing, then you've got a problem. You may need to face that thing down. Right. I understand that. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying, whatever fear you have, God don't want you to see. Let that thing control you, and so uh, and so that's that's what we and that's what that's what was going on with Job. Um, uh, he 
he, he had this fear. Well, his wealth, his prosperity, it was his security. How easy is it when you can go write a check? No matter what happens, you can go write a check. You can go pay for it. I'm going to be okay. I can pay somebody to take care of this. But God knew that's not going to solve all your problems. That won't get you to heaven. See? And so, but it was the thing, and he couldn't hardly help but get a hold of that. Many people have security blankets. When that when that fear, that worry comes, they quickly run and grab their security. That's your question. Whom or what do you run to when things go bad, when that fear comes? Where do you go or what do you do? You ought to go to God. That's what we need to do. But think about it. Do we always run to God and grab onto him only? Or do we try to grab But we've got it. We've also got all of our security. That thing that you always run to. Listen, any kid who who gets bullied at school, he's got a different. He's got a way he deals with it. And I guarantee you that's not God's way. <laughs> he might get mad. He might get in fights. He might run away. He might cry. He might scream. He might purchase a gun. But listen. And that's the problem. That's part of the problem. They All hope is taken away and nothing but fear is there and they're running rampant. But listen, that doesn't, even if you go kill all the ones that, that are mean to you, does it solve your problem? Will it get you to heaven? Will it give, give you the peace in your soul? Will it fill you with the love and, and comfort and fulfillment that you need? No. And so God wants to help you deal with this thing. Okay? So think about it. When that thing comes, what do you do? What is your reaction when that fear shows up? God and his word, this Bible, ought to be our only source. If you'll learn, go to the word of God, go find God and get a hold of God. You'll find that he's not only all you need, he's the one that you that can solve it, that can protect you, that can take care of you, that can uh, fulfill you, that can heal you, that can fix you. You say, I'm not broken. Think about it. You probably are. You may be broken. Your heart may be broken. Your mind may be broken. Your body may be broken. Your soul. It might be just so, so strong. Like there's no hope. God is the hope. Okay. So number two, I barely get through this one. Okay. Abraham's bosom. Yeah. Before Christ. Yeah. It's heaven or hell. The only two places the Bible gives is heaven or hell. And before Jesus came and died, remember he died, he descended into hell. He didn't go to hell, hell, but he descended into what we believe is the earth for three days, three nights. And he went down there and he led captivity 
captivity captive, those that were waiting, that had died believing on him, they were saved. Uh, they were waiting on him to die and rise again. Well, when he rose again, he brought them with him and took them to heaven. Since then, there's only heaven for those who believe and hell for those who reject. And it's as simple as that. You know, he puts his sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. You know, the, the, there's only the saved and the lost. And so any religion or anybody that teaches a middle ground, a place where you go and you wait, it, it doesn't exist anymore. And, and, uh, and so, and listen, yeah, that's a misleading thing to believe I'm going to be okay even if I die, you know, because hopefully somebody in my family will pray enough or I'll get up there in that waiting place and hopefully I'll be good enough or something I get. No. Once you die, you either believed in God unto salvation. You either believed he forgave sins and that he was Savior and he did. Forever, or you expect yep. yep. And that's why we sing about Jesus. That's why we preach about Jesus. Okay. That's why we ain't preaching about anybody else. Okay. That's why I love my wife, but I'm not going to preach about Sophia. Okay. <laughs> she, she, she's a great person, but she can't say, right? And only Jesus Christ can save you. Yeah, and there's so many religions that believe so many things, and it's confusing, you know. And the devil wants to confuse you. And by the way, the confusion it, doesn't that lead to fear? When you understand something, you fear it less. See, when you when you get it, well, if you understand that salvation is free, Jesus paid for it, but you don't have to pay for it. When you understand that it's free, and you understand Jesus will save you. All at one moment. Oh, yeah. See, but the devil keeps the, you're so confused with religion and, and all these doctrines and that you have to be good enough, you have to live right, or you have to measure up. If you had to measure up, where's the measure? Where's the line? How, how far up do you have to be? How good do you have to be? Yeah. Yeah. Is it up here? Where Where, where is it? It's confusion. You could never know. But when you find out the truth in the Bible, figure out. Jesus took care of it all, and he'll give it to me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Coming up. But even these little children, if we asked them, what is, uh, you know, are you getting any gifts for Christmas? They say, yeah. You know what that means? Somebody Listen, if somebody gives you something and says, now you got to pay. If somebody gives you something and says, you got to work for it. you got to be good. It's not a gift. Jesus said, not of yourself, but of the gift of God, not of work. That's the amazing. You see, it, it's all through Jesus Christ. And he'll give you a free gift okay all right i've got to wrap this up um it's a good message though we're going to get next week we'll get into uh job had he had controlling fears that was the one problem he had number two he didn't really know god he didn't have a close he believed in god but you can believe in god and even be saved but not it. And you want to get rid of those things? You want to get rid of the worries? You want to get rid of the confusion? You want to have peace? You want to have confidence? You want to know your love? Get that relationship. Get your soul settled in salvation. You know you're his. And then get your life right. He will. He will, he'll, he'll get rid of those fears. He'll help you to, to eliminate them. He'll, he'll take care of the worries. He'll show you that there is such a thing as fulfillment and peace. 
joy. All right. All right. Let's pray and we'll we'll be done here and then we'll have our prayer time. Our dear Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for everyone who is here. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just move and work in this place. I believe you've already been here, but I, I just ask that uh, uh, anyone that is here that is saved, Lord, I pray that if if we have any fears or questions or worries or problems, that you'd help help each and every one to to realize that you are the answer. Help us to go to you and let you fix and heal and change those things for the better. And I pray if there's anyone who's lost in here tonight, Lord, you'd help them to see that you can and desire to and will save them tonight. Eternally, they'll be saved. Forever after that, they'll belong to you. Lord, may you help them, Lord, to, to come to that place and, and, and realize that and be willing to trust you as Savior. And we're just going to thank you for it. Go with us now. Give us a good night. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let me turn this off real quick. We're going to sign off and then we'll.